What's up guys, welcome back. Today we will be calling an external API and then using that data to make our own API. So we're going to use Catfax. This is a free API that's publicly available. It requires no API key, no authorization. So we're gonna use that data from Catfax and then when we call our own API, it's gonna to go to Catfax, get some data, we're gonna change it in a few ways, and then we'll return our changed response. So you can look up the documentation yourself, catfact.ninja. The API is a get request when you ping this endpoint. And you get back a fact as well as a length. What we're going to do is simplify this API. So we're gonna change fact and call it catfact, and then we're going to drop the length field. Uh, our UI developers are really good. They can calculate how long that string is even using an inferior programming language like JavaScript. As for resources, we will be using the REST template. This is a built-in HTTP client for Spring. Uh, there are other options, OKHTTP, OK HTTP client, and there's a lot of other ones. So you'll have to get familiar with whatever library your job uses, but they're all fairly similar. And we actually have quite a long list of things to do. We need to create a controller and an endpoint. We need to create a query handler. We need our model objects, our cat fact response object, as well as a cat fact DTO, the one we're actually going to respond with. We need an exception class in the event that the cat facts is down. That's really important. We wanna, we wanna know what failed. Did the external API fail or did our API fail? We also need to configure a bean for our REST template. I'll show you how to do that. And don't delete this part of the project because in the next video, we're gonna save a copy of the original catfact JSON to our database. And that's when we're going to cover serialization and deserialization. So don't worry about that now, but keep this part of your project. So let's just start by going to Postman and hitting this endpoint. So we have a get request, HTTPS catfact.ninja slash fact. So we get back this fact, which is a string, and then we also get back a length, which is in the format of an integer. Okay, making our way back over to our project, let's create a new folder, catfact, new Java class, catfact. This is going to represent the thing we get back from the external API, new Java class, cat fact DTO. This is going to represent what we send back to our client. We're going to annotate it with at data. And we need to match this up. So fact and length. Private string fact private int length. We'll also annotate our cat fact DTO with our Lombok data annotation, as well as an all arcs constructor, which we will use later. Private string, and we're going to name it cat fact. Okay, let's make our controller and our query handler. New Java class, cat fact controller. New Java class cat fact query handler. Annotate your controller with at rest controller. This should all be very familiar to you by now. At request mapping. We'll name it cat fact. At auto wired. Private cat fact query handler, cat fact query handler. We're injecting our dependency at get mapping, public response entity. We're going to return a cat fact DTO, get cat fact, return cat fact query handler dot execute. And we're going to pass in null. Of course, we have not implemented this method yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Our cat fact query handler is going to be annotated with at service. Remember it implements query. 
Our input is void or null. And our output is a cat fact DTO. Let's implement the methods. So now the error should go away, which it did. Great. So next we need a rest template. So private final rest template, rest template. And we'll generate a constructor. So we inject this rest template in to our cat fact query handler. This is the thing we're going to use to make the external API request. But there's one more thing we need to do in order for this to work. So at the same level of cache configuration, we're going to do new Java class. We're going to call it configuration. We're going to annotate it with at configuration. It automatically adds this extra stuff for me, which is totally fine. Use the bean annotation, rest template, rest template. And we're going to return a new rest template. So this will instantiate it at the project level. That way we can use it here. So now coming down to our query handler method, we're going to say rest template. And if you click dot, you have all of these methods built in. So we have get methods. This corresponds with the HTTP request of get. We have delete, which corresponds with our delete mapping HTTP request, as well as a ton more. So the external API is a get. So let's go ahead and do rest template dot get for object. And we're going to select the first one. You can see it passes in a URL as well as a class name. So the URL is our endpoint in the form of a string, and that matches up to this right here. So go ahead and copy this URL and paste it in. Next, we need to figure out how do we get the return object. So here we're going to say catfact.class, and what this is saying is once you hit this endpoint, return a catfact object that we have defined. We do need to capture it, so say cat fact cat fact is equal to rest template. So next up, we want to return a cat fact DTO object. So let's go ahead and say cat fact DTO, cat fact DTO is equal to new cat fact DTO, and we're going to pass in the thing we actually want, cat fact dot get fact. And then we will return a response entity with the cat fact DTO in it. This should all be very familiar at this point. So let's go ahead and run our application. It should be working at this point. Making our way over, we have another API, which is our internal one, localhost 8080 slash cat fact. And we get only the cat fact, no length. So good job, this worked, but we're not done yet. We need to do some other work. What if we ping the external API but there's a failure. Maybe their server is down. We need to be able to catch that exception and handle it appropriately. So let's go ahead and add some extra code. We're going to say try catch exception exception. So let's move that API call up into our try block. Now, if this doesn't work for any reason, we want to throw our own custom exception. So let's go ahead and create a new exception, external cat facts down exception and we're going to extend our custom base exception. So remember in a previous video, we already set this up and all we have to do is call the super constructor, which passes in the HTTP status as well as a simple response object, which is just a string essentially. And this handles the returning the response entity back to the user so that they know what happened. So if this doesn't work, we will throw a new external cat facts down exception and we're going to pass in HTTP status of service unavailable. And for our simple response, we're simply going to say the external API is down, not our fault. Okay, guys, this concludes the video. Good job. I know we went really fast, but this should be mostly review for you guys at this point. You've already done all of these things. Okay, on the next video, we're going to save a copy of the original cat fact to the database in the form of JSON. See you then.